crazy question I have to say. What the hell? Like it's me. I say, oh my god. They was like, holy, holy deep. Was this going on? Because, because even now, I, I I get like speechless. Why is it important for people to have a good? You do not know how to speak your mind. You're not going to give your organization much credibility for what you're really fighting for. Beauty queen doesn't mean perfection. Now I feel embarrassed to say this, but I'm going to do it because that's how I am. So. <laughs> that's good, that's good. My wave became, became the Miss International wave. Right, Stephen? I have become a patent. Ito naman yung bumabasa. My travels. I love my travels. I would just want it to be that I gave something back that made them happy. Money or love? Love. Good evening from Manila and welcome back to another episode of Mississology Beauty Talks. I am your Mississology editor, Drew Francisco, and we are joined on our 18th episode this season with our Mississology International Correspondent, Amir Dumama. Hi, Amir. Hi, Drew. How are you? And to all I'm the, good. Also, all, yeah, hi also to all the viewers from um, around the world, from across the world. And I would also like to welcome guys the resident panelist from Miss International Organization, Stephen Diaz. Hi, Stephen. How are you? Welcome back. Welcome to back. Welcome back. Hi, I'm back. Hi, yes, I'm back. And I'm sure Stephen is very excited to meet and talk to our very special guest tonight. Of course. I wouldn't miss her for anything. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so without further ado, we won't be keeping this any uh, long any longer. So I would like Drew, please introduce our very special guest for tonight. Yes, definitely. It is my honor and privilege to introduce our very special guest for tonight. She is a 25-year-old psychology student and certified pastry chef who owns a successful small business that employs local women. She is fluent in English and Spanish and lived abroad for a year in New York where she got to study with people from all over the world. She is an advocate on HIV and AIDS awareness and a devout flamenco and Cuban salsa dancer. Friends, let us all welcome the beautiful and stunning Miss Venezuela 2020, Mariangel Villas Neal. Hello, Drew, Amara, Stephen. Thank you for having me. Hello to all the people who are connected with Hello. us. I'm so happy and so grateful for being here with you. Yeah. How are you? Yes, Venezuela. Buenos dias. Yeah. Buenos dias. Me hicieron madrugar. You got me to get up early. <laughs> this is how you wake up in Venezuela, you know? Beautiful, perfect, and you know, <laughs> flawless. Yeah. No one knows that like I woke that. up at 4 a.m. in the morning to do my hair and makeup, so. <laughs> wow, thank, you, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Drew, you are mute, Drew. Um, I'm not going to prolong this any longer. My first mm -hmm. question for Maria Definitely winning Miss Venezuela has changed your life in ways you could not imagine. So could you tell us how the title has changed you so far. Yeah, definitely. It changed my life completely. And I think I always said that this was a blessing during this year because if it wasn't for the Miss Venezuela, I don't know what would I be with this pandemic. And I'm so thankful for, I'm, I thank life and I thank God for, for the opportunity to become Miss Venezuela during a pandemic and during a hard time we were facing. And for me, it was a, a life-changing experience. The, the yes. woman I, I developed during the competition and during the whole preparation, it's completely different the person I am right now than the one that I was when I started the year. 
And and I think if it wasn't for the Miss Venezuela, I wouldn't have faced the 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 whole situation we are living in the world. Yes. In in the same way. So to, uh, today I feel grateful. I feel powerful. I feel confident, secure, and and I'm proud of the woman that I became because of the the experience with the Miss Venezuela. Yes. So you mentioned earlier that it was a challenge of being Miss Venezuela in the pandemic and. It, Aside from that, being Miss Venezuela alone always comes with pressure. So how are you handling the pressure and the instant fame that comes with being Miss Venezuela? Yeah, actually, that is a common question because uh, most of the people believe that it's... Well, for me, I don't feel like it's a pressure. Or, or I feel like it's more exciting than maybe for other, other contestants. And also, I feel like this responsibility, it's bigger and and but i enjoy in the process and i feel that like that, that is the key to enjoy the process and and work with very carefully in every step to get prepared and and get with the all training completed when 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 you are almost to go to the to the competition so mm -hmm. i feel i don't feel pressure uh, pressure i feel very excited and very emotional sometimes because representing your country it's something that I cannot describe, but being yes, Venezuela, yes. it's uh, such a strong responsibility. Yes, and uh, you mentioned the keyword, enjoying the process. So yeah. could you describe to us what's a typical day like for you as Miss Venezuela? Well, a typical day for Miss Venezuela is waking up very early in the morning to get to yes. the Quinta Miss Venezuela, which is like our house or our Bigger. I'm, I'm right now in the in the house, and as you can see, it's really big. It's it's a magical place. The first time I entered here, it was I I, I cannot explain what I feel because I I think that most of the girls in our country dreams with being here, and and yes. the the red stairs are like the the classic of this uh, house. And when you get here, you have to be ready to work the whole day. And you have to be ready to go to your home at very late in the night. So it's uh -huh. I, I've been doing my my um, stylist and makeup classes, dancing classes, speech uh, classes for to get to improve my speech. Also, a lot of meetings to organize the the things for the trip, and and so many things that that we do every day. But the whole thing we do it here in this house. That for me, it's like my home for a year and it has been the home for so many queens that has been here and it's so magical and mm -hmm. so powerful and I feel like it saves a lot of history. That's okay. true. Actually, there it, it it that house that you are in right now seems like a living legend or a living um, yeah. history, you know, piece of history, um, especially in the pageant world, because the people or the winners, even non-winners who have been a part of that building has have impacted the lives of so many people from around the world, you know, not just in Venezuela, basically, but mostly pageant fans from anywhere in the world. Yeah, I, I hope, I really hope that things get better and, and we can make this house to, to become maybe a, a tourist place. So people yeah. like you that you're so fan and, and so followers of the of the beauty pageant can come and visit and, and stay a day here and enjoy the, the the energy of this house i would love to <laughs> yes. yeah i know you will i know you will <laughs> now, no. now Drew, are you ready for the these or that questions yeah yes. no, no, it's no, but be before but before the this or that question uh, i want to know more about mariang health uh, beyond pageantry. So mm -hmm. could you tell us something that most people still do not know about? Well, I'm very transparent. I feel like I, I've been, I, I like, I, I'm the kind of person who like to share the whole story because mm -hmm. I, I always like people to know me very well. But I think, I don't know, maybe like I, I sing really bad in the shower, I think. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm, I'm really transparent and I always like to, to let people to know all the things that I, I do and all the things that I like to do because that is a way to inspire, being honest and being true with your life story. Yes. Yeah. I have to say, everyone who sings in the shower 
sounds really good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I feel like I I sound good, but I don't know what uh, yes. everyone else thinks. <laughs> I'm enjoying this conversation so far, but I'm going to pass the mic to Amir for the this or that segment. Good. Yes. Mary, you know, we are so excited to know you, to know more about you and your journey to the crown. But before, we would like to break the ice first and play a little bit of game. We called it this or that. So we will ask you to pick between two words or two scenarios and just explain to us briefly why. Okay, so okay. Marie and Jill, you are you ready now? Yeah, I'm ready. Are you ready? Okay. <laughs> Drew. Okay, the, fir the first one. Coffee or tea? Hmm. Coffee in the morning and tea in the afternoon. <laughs> Both. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. The next one. Facebook or Instagram? Facebook or Instagram? Definitely, I'm such a fan of Instagram. I feel like you can connect more with people through that uh, social media. Mm -hmm. Okay, I agree. A lot and, of young and your fans? teenagers are into. Yep, and your fans can follow you. What's your uh, Instagram handle? Sorry, I, I didn't hear you. What's yep. your Instagram uh, account? Oh, my Instagram account? Mariangel V A with double E. Okay. So okay. Take, take note of that, pageant fans. Please follow her. Okay. The next one. Dog. Would you rather dog. have dogs or cats? <laughs> I have I have three cats, and wow. uh, they they came to my house when the pandemic started, and they were like a blessing in disguise because they appeared by nothing and 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 they became part of our house we started feeding them and, and taking care of them they were very little and then they are my pets and they are at my home in my hometown with my mother and my family and i really really miss them did you have, I have, I have some drew i think you're mute do they have names your cats yeah there is one that is called Pirata, which is like pir pirate, pirate, because uh, it has like a, a, a something uh, black right here in the eye. And the other one, it's called Mina. At the beginning, uh, it was called Mina because we thought uh, it was female, but it turned to be male. So <laughs> now it's Mina. Yeah. And the other one that was the first one we, we found, uh, it's called Hope. We call it like that because we found it in a time that we were so uh, living so our sanctity and and we were like anxious for everything that was going. So it, it was they were like our little piece of hope during that time. Okay, okay, interesting. Drew, next. Would you rather stay in city or in the countryside? I'm. I think I'm more like a kind of city person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really enjoy the, the the stress out, the movement, doing a lot of things during the day. So I think I I vote for it. Yeah. Okay, I can see that. Next, Drew. Would you rather have sneakers oh or high heels? I think if, if I say my honest answer, my fans are going to kill me. But <laughs> I'm more like a sneaker person. Yeah. I can wear sneakers. I can sleep even with the sneakers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next one, Drew. This is great. Oh, swimsuit oh. or long gown? No, definitely long gown. For me, it's like a magical moment to, to wear in a, a long gown. Mm -hmm. Okay. Most of the girls love long gown. Okay, Drew, next please. Drew, are you there? Okay, would you rather lose all your old memories or never be able to make new ones? Oh, to be honest, I 
I won't choose any of them because I feel when you lose, lose all, all your memories, it's like you are being so much uh, focused on the past and never be able to make new ones. It's being like too concentrated in the future and I like to, to always be on the present and here and now and I enjoy the whole moment. So I think I, I don't know if it's an ocean, but I just none. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's understandable. Next, yeah. Drew. Oh, this is one. This one is funny. Uh, would you rather uh, be in a zombie outbreak or an alien invasion? <laughs> I would love to see how aliens are. If there okay. is life on another planet, so I think I will choose alien invasion. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I agree. I also choose alien invasion. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Next, Drew. Okay. Would you rather be able to fly or turn invisible? Hmm. I think I will turn invisible. Okay. In that way, yeah. In that way, you can be anywhere and maybe help other people mm -hmm. and and i don't know know everything that you want to know <laughs> and, and no one can see you that is, a, that is a good one <laughs> yeah I, I also like be turning turning into invisible next drew okay this one would you rather have more time or more money Oh, definitely more time. Yeah. If you have time and you are intelligent, you definitely will make money. So more time. <laughs> more time to have more money. Okay. <laughs> Next, Drew. Okay. Would you rather be criticized or be ignored? No. I think no one deserves to be criticized or be ignored. We are enough. We are valued. So I don't think I would choose any of them. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's, that's understandable. Drew, next. Would you rather, this is my favorite actually, crown or romance? Choose the right one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I already have romance. So, oh. guess, what? guess what? I'm going oh. for the crown. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can have both. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> so that was fun. I enjoyed <laughs> that, especially when you you said you you're gonna be honest. I love that. But we now really at appreciate point, honesty here. Yeah. <laughs> and now I, this. Yes, I'm here. No, no, Drew. Just continue. Yep. At this point, we wanna. Talk about your pageant journey. So earlier you mentioned that um, being a Miss Venezuela at the time of the pandemic was a both a blessing but a challenge as well. So I want to know what inspired you to join Miss Venezuela? More than inspiration, I think it was a dream of mine since I was a little girl. And, and mm -hmm. I believe that Venezuelan women have this in our blood. It's some kind of a part of our heritage, of our culture, our traditions. And I don't, I won't say that all women in Venezuela, but most of them uh, dream with being part of the Miss Venezuela because it's part of our story. So I, I decided one day to make that dream a reality. And I started working from a long time ago, from some years ago, I started working little by little to construct the person that I wanted to become or the person that I wanted to show the world. Because I believe it's not just that, okay, I'm going to enter to the pageant, but okay, what are you going to offer as, as yes. a beauty queen? What are you going to, to say to the world? What are you going to tell? What's your story? So I prepare myself many times before in order to uh, project the real me and to project my story when the time came and the opportunity came to become Miss Venezuela. Yes. And um, I was watching your live interview with Natalie last night. And in that interview, you mentioned, you mentioned that um, there, there were moments uh, in, during the Miss Venezuela competition that you were thinking if you were going to pursue it. 
and then your sister was the one who told you that what if that, like if you do not pursue it then what there's what's what else is gonna gonna be what's gonna happen to you so could you tell us more about this story yeah the thing is that no not all the things in life comes as we expect so when i uh, i always dream to be in the miss venezuela in a normal miss venezuela competition with the audience with all the beautiful gowns and the noises the people the events yeah. the the meetings with the with the the conferences the meetings with the with the journalists so i was dreaming about the the whole thing the the normal thing and when i decided to enter or when i got cast to the miss venezuela suddenly the pandemic started so it was a shock because i was i i said to myself okay but what if is this is a sign of this means that this is not for me and i started to asking myself a lot of questions and feeling insecure sometimes and when the pandemic started i was not in caracas i was in my hometown and i couldn't travel because it was a lockdown there was a lockdown and yes. and it was really hard because i didn't know if, if i was going to be able to make it to the competition and there were so many times when i told my family and my sister okay i think the best option for now is to quick and maybe maybe uh, the next year i can try again but i've been trying for three years before and and something always happened and, and it, it wasn't for me so my sister always told me that she told me okay but keep trying because now you you pass the most difficult part you got cast you are one of the candidates you, you are going you are one of the official candidates so let it flow and try until the end and that's what I did, and I made it to Caracas, and I made it to the competition, and I finally I became Miss Venezuela, and and that is a that is something that most people not always uh, see all the process yes. we we go through before getting into the competition, and all the hard situations we have to face sometimes. Yeah, and yeah. it's 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 a it's proof that there's always uh, it's all how do I put this. It's always good that there's someone who will push you to yeah. your limits and to push you to pursue your dreams. And thanks, thanks to your sister, we have you tonight. <laughs> yeah. Thank so you, now sister. My... If you are there, te amo. Ah. Yes. And uh, my next question is related to this photo that I will be flashing right now. Okay. It was your reaction, oh. your winning moment. It was a different winning moment for you. So could you tell us a, a bit of a background story from when you were taping the finals of Miss Venezuela up to this moment when you finally won the title? You know, I was really anxious and really nervous because there were so many, there were a lot of um, like previous uh, trophies or, or previous bands that were, uh, that, that other girls won during the competition and I didn't got selected for any of them. And I was a little bit confused because I, I said to myself, okay, but what if I don't get anything from the, from the competition? And I was at home alone because my family was in my hometown. We couldn't meet because of the lockdown. And okay, it, it's just something that I cannot explain when I, saw myself on the top 10, it was wow. And then I answered the question and then I saw myself in the top five. I, I, I think I couldn't breathe. I, I wasn't feeling anything. I didn't hear anything. I, I put my phone because we had to record ourselves, our reaction, and we, we had to feel our reactions. And I, I got my phone right here and it was like, Okay, I'm going to cry anyway. If I win or if I not, I'm going to cry anyway. But when I saw myself in the top five and then they mentioned uh, Isabel as Miss International, I knew in that moment when I saw her face, I knew that I was next to be mentioned. And it was so amazing. I don't know, we have this special connection and it was so wonderful uh, when I heard my name and I, the, the only thing that I could do in that time was screaming because it was containing so many emotions inside of me and i think i i'm the, the first queen that was crowned without wearing high heels yeah 
<laughs> that's something unique. Yeah, yes. that is something unique. That's going to make history. <laughs> yeah, you you may very curious, Drew. I'm actually very curious yes, because um, it is a very intense competition, right? Like, I wanted to know um, if somewhere along the journey, did you already start to feel that you were actually going to win the Miss Venezuela title? You know, it, it's a very strange um, setting that we had because of the pandemic. But, you know, were you reading some of the blogs who are actually ranking the girls as who's going to win number one, number two, number three? Or were you affected by that? Or did you start to feel that maybe you have a long shot or maybe you have a chance? Yeah, I think I I had my moments. Yeah, I had my moments because social media, it's such a pressure sometimes. It can be a, a really tough pressure. And you see a lot of hot picks and, and a lot of finalists. And sometimes I was there, but most of the time I wasn't there. And and I know that maybe not mean anything to the judges or to the organization, but it means a lot for, for the fans and for the mm. people who are supporting you uh, through social media. And it's not a lie that the, the whole competition was, uh, at least the whole competition was on social media. So it was really difficult sometimes when I see the, the, the finalists and I wasn't there at the beginning. I wasn't in any of them. And then I, I started to show myself a little bit to be more authentic and, and to show in the world what I wanted to become because I wasn't in the beauty pattern uh, industry before. So no one knew me, no one knew me in that time. And, and I was like, like the new one in, in the industry. So uh, it was really hard at the beginning because there were so many beautiful girls and also prepared that they, they were like the favorites and they, people always shared them. And when I started feeling people to support me more and then it became the, the, the interview with the judges, I felt like this was my moment to shine. I was the last one because I represented the state Zulia, which is with, mm -hmm. with, C, with C, and it's the last state. So I always had to, to wait to the end to film, to be interviewed, to have a meeting, everything. I, I always was the last one in the, in the line. So it was interesting, but I feel like it, that, that all, the whole situation made me stronger and made me to feel more confident about myself and to trust more uh, about the things that I was doing. And I don't know where, when, but I started feeling that, that I was going to win. I don't know when, I always felt it because you, I, I believe that you always have to think and believe that in your mind before it became a reality. And when I entered to the competition, I create the situation in my mind before, and then I started working for that. But there was a special moment during the competition and after the uh, interview with the judges that I said to myself, okay, just relax and this is for you. Just relax, this is for you. And I repeated myself that every single night, every single morning, and it became like my mantra as well as with the love yourself. And if you love yourself, you trust yourself. So um, that was like the best experience that I had to to develop and to grow as a woman. Yes. And wow. you mentioned love yourself. So I want to jump into your advocacy work discussion now. So um, before competing in Miss Venezuela, you had a complicated surgery that led you to live an entire life without your right breast. And can you tell us uh, a background story about this and how Love Yourself started? Yeah, that happened um, many years before I, uh, like two or three years before I entered to the Miss Venezuela competition. I tried to enter to the pageantry world, and but I was really genuine at that time because I, I wasn't involved with that industry. And I discovered that when you enter, you start hearing a lot of voices and there's a lot of people who, who give you advices to give you suggestions, let, left you comments and, and tell you how to walk, how to look, how to, what to wear, how to act. And it's very difficult because you try to be yourself, but there's so many people telling you what to do. So uh, I started feeling insecure and, and I discovered that I wasn't as strong enough as I thought in that time. So there, got, there was a moment that I was going to compete that someone told me, 
an advisor told me that in order to compete or in order to become a strong candidate, I had to to went to a breast augmentation. And that made me thought a, a lot about myself and, and my self-worth because I was fine with my body, but I started feeling insecure because of that advice. I paid too more attention to that advice that it makes me feel small. And finally, I took the decision to went under the surgery. And a month later, I woke up and, and my, my breast, my right breast had triple in size. There was a complicated infection that left me bedridden for more than six months. And I, I started feeling depressed because I was gaining pounds and, and I wasn't able to, to get to, the, to the, the path that I was constructing because I wanted to become um, a model or a miss, but and I was working hard for that and everything was ruined because of that decision. And at the end, it was my decision, but it was influenced by others because I started hearing that voices. So there was a moment and after my, during my recovery that I couldn't uh, see myself in the mirror and tell me, I love you. I couldn't, it was impossible. It was like, I, I, did, I wasn't accepting myself. So there was, I, 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 I'm a fan of psychology. I'm a uh, psychology student and I've been reading a lot of books about self-help since I was really young. And I knew that I had all the tools but I had to make, uh, put them in practice. And it's really hard. It's, it's like when you give an advice, but you don't practice it, it's, it's like the, kind of that sense. And it was really hard, but I found a way to, to get that inner power that I know that we all have, but we have to discover it. And there was a day that I saw myself in the mirror and I told myself, okay, if you want to recover, if you want to get yourself again on the right track to your dreams, please love yourself. And the others will love you and you will love others. And I think it was like a revelation to me. It was, it became a mantra. It became a mantra and, and I started using that uh, as, a, as an advice to me. And then when I started to the, to the Miss Venezuela, I discovered how impactful that was that message and that I can use it to inspire others. Not just the story, because I didn't tell the story before. I, I decided to tell the world the story after winning Miss Venezuela, but I still was using the, the mantra, love yourself, because for me it was so powerful. But then I discovered as well that I had to tell the whole story, the back story, to make people understand the reason why I was yes. using that. So I think that is a, a good, a good way to, to inspire others is to show your true story, the whole, the complete story, and, and, and being honest with the world. Yeah. And thank you, Maria Angel, for inspiring all of us with your story and uh, for uh, doing this and uh, sharing your Love Yourself uh, movement with a lot of people and doing giving conferences on, on body positivity, entrepreneurship, yeah. and leadership. That was very very uh, noble of you to do. And aside from that, I want to talk about a, a, a little bit of fun side of you. You're a certified pastry chef. Yeah. And uh, with your, yes, and with you, in your business, you actually run a campaign where you deliver birthday cakes to children's hospitals and nursing homes. So I want to know more about this story. Yeah, I, <laughs> Interesting. I in that time, yeah. During that time that I was, trying to recover from the whole thing that I suffered with the operation. I wanted to do something productive and I discovered that I could do something about my passion that is cooking and baking. So I decided to start up and I create my entrepreneurship using the power of social media and I create a pastry shop. And it went better than I expected. I have to say with, with being humble, but my desserts are really really good you have to take i would love to to take one of my desserts to philippines <laughs> but uh, it was it was really good and in that moment i found a, a foundation a company that was celebrating birthdays uh, on on hospitals every month so i decided to join them and what i can do what what why to, why not to make cakes to children and nursing homes 
every month to celebrate their birthday. So it was a really interesting activity sharing with the with the, the kids and the, the abuelitos, como decimos acá, uh, like we said here, and, and it was really interesting. I started doing that before, of the, before the pandemic. And because of the pandemic, we have to stop the activities because we couldn't get to mm -hmm. the hospitals and also the nursing homes. But I want to keep running that campaign uh, as soon as I can with my company that right now my sister is helping me with the pastry shop. It's very little still, but I, I dream to become to make them become a big, big, big franchise. Yes. I want to ask my young Hel, um, if, if there's a one pastry or bread that you, you bake in your shop that you would uh, give to us or let us taste, what would it be? There are some there are some cookies that I make that are like our special recipe. We call it in Spanish choco invierno. It's like mm -hmm. snow chocolate because they are made with chocolate, but they're uh, covered with uh, sh glass sugar, so they looks like it's snowing on the top wow. of the cake. And in, on the inside, they are like a brownie, but on the mm -hmm. outside, they are really really like a cookie. They are more, more tough like a cookie. So it's a it's a, something that when you try it, your mind blows. Yeah. <laughs> if only that Venezuela sounds like really yummy. Like, Drew. <laughs> Drew, if only if only Venezuela is nearby, so yes. she can deliver a cake for us or cookies. Yeah, for us. <laughs> I would love to do it. And I, I'm planning to, to take them to the to the Miss Venus, Miss Universe competition, but I don't know if I can make it because it's, it's kind of uh, difficult, the logistic with, with all the restrictions and the regulations, but I would love to bring a lot of cookies to, to the competition to, to share with, with the whole organization and all my sisters. Okay. Yes, and um, the last question on this segment, I know, Marianne Hell, you're a very busy lady, and you're also an advocate on HIV and AIDS prevention, and you work closely with NGOs in rural neighborhoods around your country to promote free testing. So could you tell us more about this and what has been the biggest challenge that you experienced while doing this project? Yeah, be besides knowing the reality of the, the neighborhoods and vulnerable neighborhoods in my country, something that really impacted my life was the, all the, the stigmatization that still has the, the testing for HIV AIDS. And I had the opportunity to visit some neighborhoods to do campaigns for prevention and testing. And it was interesting how people didn't get tested when we offered the test. They were just receiving our flyers and our information, but they were, were not like doing the line to get tested just to, to prevent. So I decided to get tested in, that, in the moment in public. And then the line was like, I mean, the longest line that I saw in my life. And I, I discovered how impactful is my influence and how can I help other people to understand and to inform and educate, which is like the most important uh, fact in this issue is to educate people the importance of prevention and also testing. Yes. So thank you, thank you, Marianne Hale, for sharing with us your um, advocacy works. Um, we got to know more about you and your um, humble heart. But at this point, I want to pass the mic to Amir because we will talk now about your Miss Universe preparations. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and, and I believe it's like five days or six days before the official start of Miss Universe, right? So definitely, you're almost finished with your trainings for sure. And I just want to know, um, what has been your favorite part of the trainings? Well, I think... And also favorite. the difficult part. Yeah, and also the difficult part. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't find anything, any part difficult because as I told you before, I enjoy the process and I, and know I do everything with so much passion and so much joy that I, I try to let it flow and, and, and avoid conflicts and, and just enjoy the process. So I would say that my favorite part, it's a hard question and I don't want my teachers to, to get mad about me 
because I really enjoy um, all the classes that help me with my projection and my body language, for example, dancing. That is one of my favorite classes ever because it helps a lot with your runway and your body posture and your body language, the way you project, the way you uh, seduce the, the audience because that is an art and you are creating like a character as a miss. So it's, it's one of my favorite and also it's a way to, to free of stress and, and, and feel really free and, and, and feel comfortable. So I really enjoy my, my dancing classes. That is one of my, my favorite yep. ones. I have to I have to add to that. I, I remember seeing a video of you, Isabel and Alejandra dancing. Yeah. And I was I, I went crazy, like, oh my god. The the three of them were so good at this. Yeah, we've been doing uh, different classes together. There are some videos that are not posted, but if you saw them, oh my gosh, you will die because we are really good at dancing and then we were we we practice like making some performance like we are going to add but we are not going to show it just just for us to practice but mm -hmm. we are like a good team i believe we are a good team and and we come from a trade really well uh, with one another so i feel like this is uh, mm -hmm. a really good practice for us wow okay. here. now uh, yes drew without revealing too much uh, without <laughs> revealing too much can you give us a hint on what will be your national costume and evening gown for Miss Universe without revealing too much. Just a hint. Yeah, well, uh, I, I will share with you a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is a, there is a, a phenomenon. I, I was saying in, in the past months that I like to remember something about my state, my hometown. And I decided to use an amazing phenomenon that occurs in in Surya State, which is the state that I was born, and it's the Katatumbo lightning. And it in 2013, the the world the book of the world record Guinness included that phenomenon into the into the book because of the average of lightning. And I feel a strong connection with the power and the lightning. Every time you go to Maracaibo, which is like the, the capital of the Zulia state, you can see the lightning because it, it occurs like 300 times uh, in, during the night. So it's, it's really amazing. And I want to project or transform that energy of lightning into a projection uh, during the national costume show like to show the world how how much light we can we can project and how much power we can project so it's like a, a metaphoric uh, idea that i wanted to share but actually i fit the, the national costume yesterday for the last mm -hmm. time and mm. i fell in love with it. <laughs> i fell in love uh, and and i just i'm so anxious for you to to see it because it's going to shine really bright yeah you know honestly maria angela whenever whenever a miss venezuela candidate goes out of stage i'm so excited about their candidates wearing evening gown and national costume because honestly i really love their evening gowns and also their national costumes so interesting yeah. you know honestly for me um for me my opinion without venezuela the pageant is boring for me in my opinion <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry that to say that. Really good. Yeah, just like what I what I read on the comments earlier, Venezuela is Venezuela. Yes, yeah. Venezuela is, that is Venezuela. A common, that is a common quote. I, I don't use it because I don't want to sound like, okay, Venezuela is Venezuela. But, <laughs> but it, it can be true. It can be true. We have that something. Yeah, I believe wow. in that. I believe in my heart that it's like this. Yeah. It is a product of years and years of uh, working so hard to create that sort of brand. You know, it's like a brand name when it comes to beauty pageants. So we should give credit where credit is due. And then I'm pretty sure that a lot of people in Venezuela have worked so hard for that one. So until we have that image of Venezuela as a really strong um, name when it comes to pageantry, definitely a yeah. powerhouse. And no matter if you win or not, I feel like 
I'm in, in a, going to the university here. When I came here, I feel like I'm going to the university with all my assignments and, and all my subjects. And it's like, you, when you leave that, this house, you are ready to conquer not only the universe, but your life and life, everything you yes. want to achieve in your life. So for me, it's like a university of life. Okay. Anyway, so um, I also believe that some of the candidates go to Venezuela or top Venezuelan trainers. So what do you think sets Venezuela apart from other countries when it comes to training? I, I won't say that it's just about the training because I know there are so many professionals that are here working and training a lot to teach the best techniques and the best tools for all our queens. But now there are also so many teachers and trainers that, that are outside Venezuela. They are like it's spreading the knowledge and it's spreading the, the, the whole professionalism they have. And, and I feel like it's because it is in our blood, as I told you before. It, it's something that it's with us, that energy that we transmit when we are on the stage and and our professionals works with a lot of passion no matter if the situation is not the appropriate or if, if the situation is hard because it's not a secret that in Venezuela the things are not always happy and we have to overcome day by day but they still the, the all the trainers and the professionals are working with so much passion that I love to see them I love to see them how they enter to this house like oh my gosh i'm here again and i'm and i'm going to teach so i feel like i'm really proud to say that so many girls come to this country to to get more knowledge and to increase their preparation for me that is such an honor and anyone that can that want to come here to to be to yeah to share with our, our professionals are very very welcome yeah i agree I, I agree. And now I pass the mic to Drew for uh, to ask you some uh, questions coming from the fans. Okay. Yes. Great. So the, so over the past week, we asked the fans to give us questions. And one of the fans will actually be asking the question to you live tonight. So so um, he is Paquito. Paquito Alves is from the Philippines. I would like to ask a question to you. So Pax, take it away. Hi, Paquito. So my question is, um, what advice can you give to young people who are troubled between pursuing their passion and following their parents' wishes? Oh my gosh, that is such a, a good question because that is something that so many young uh, people face in their lives. I, I feel like I feel lucky because my parents guide me to to get my own decisions, but my advice to those uh, young girls and, and boys is to follow their own voice, no matter what. I know that your parents always want to give you the best advice, but you also have to listen to your intuition and to your heart. Because at the end of the day, when you leave your house and when you build your life, it's you are like responsible of, of your decisions. And if you, you have to think, if I do this, am I gonna be happy at the end of the day? Or, uh, or in so many years, in, in 10 years, in 20 years, am I going to be happy? And if not, then it might not be the, the right decision. So with, with so much love and respect, you can talk to your parents because communication for me is like the most important tool you can use. So, talk to them and, and open your heart and, and be honest for what you really want. And don't let anyone, no one, never let you, let other people decide for you. So thank you, Perfect. Paquito, thank for, you for your that question. question. And uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. So, the next question from the fans is from Shri Z, Shri Yamashu 2020. Who inspires you the most? Oh, there are so many people that I that inspires me, but I would say the easiest one because it's the one that I love the most. It's my mom. 
Yes. When I was a little girl, I always doubt about everything. If I didn't do things because I didn't know if they if they're going to work. And I remember my mom always told me, but just try it. What is the worst thing that can happen? I mean, if that's for you, it's going to work. And and I grow up with that advice. So right now I feel unstoppable. I feel like I can can conquer the universe, the whole universe, just by trying and, and saying yes to life adventures. Yeah. And the final question from the fans, it's in Spanish. It's from Tino Coyori. Call us to my sueño. What is your biggest dream? Well, my biggest dream right now, you know what is my biggest dream. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You know, conquering the universe. Everyone knows. But yeah, but after after that, I know that my life can change completely. But uh, some of the dreams that I want to to uh, came up with a reality uh, in so, some years after uh, maybe growing up with my pastry shop i wanted to become a franchise uh, in a big 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 restaurant maybe in philippines i can have a, a big restaurant and then i i would love to to finish my studies mm -hmm. uh, as a psychology and also use that knowledge to help other people and to help young girls and young boys to understand that the only voice they need to hear is their own voice and to guide them to what is the, the path of life uh, from my experiences because that is all i have to offer my experience yes and now we will go to the dreaded but the most exciting part of the segment of the show, it's the Q and A challenge. Omir, what are the mechanics of the Q and A challenge? Okay. Yeah. Now let us assume that you are now in the final Q and A of your respective pageant, and that is Miss Universe. So give us at least four numbers, or should I say, uh, at least a numbers from one to ten. Three. Then one, yeah, three numbers. So give us the three numbers. Then we will ask you the corresponding questions. So. You will have to think there's an imaginary ball beside you, a fish ball. You get a number and tell us what number you'd like to, cho to choose. You choose. And remember, something. remember, we have a time limit for this one. This is like your your rehearsal for the final Q and A in Miss Universe. Oh, oh yes. Okay. You're already in the finalist. Mm. Okay, hopefully. So yeah. th this okay. is this is a test. <laughs> okay, pick your number now. Okay, number two. Drew. Number two. So to a child who's never seen a pageant, how would you describe a beauty queen? Here I am, a normal woman who loves herself enough, who has self-confidence, who who loves the way he is passionate about, and he who uses the universal crown to help other people and to inspire your women of the importance of loving themselves and, and knowing that no one can let you uh, or in that can let you make other people's decisions very good <laughs> next number please pick another number okay um number eight number eight please drew <clears throat> number eight question is what quality in yourself are you most proud of and how will you apply that quality to to your time as Miss Universe? One quality that I developed uh, since I was a little, a little girl, it's emotional intelligence. And I feel like I apply, can apply it during, not during the Miss Universe, but in my whole life, because it helps you to build a strong relationships, not just with yourself, but with other people. And that is what a beauty queen needs to do, to make a strong relationships with the, the, whole, uh, uh, the whole universe. Wow, that's a very good answer. Pick another question, please. Okay, the last one is mm, number Ma four. Mm. Cosmetic surgery is considered as an elephant in the room in pageants. We know it happens, but it's usually frowned upon. Should we be more open accepting about this? Why or why not? Definitely, we should be more open because it's a personal matter. It definitely, it's a personal matter. It's a personal decision. What anyone do to maybe improve their physique or improve their appearance is 
it's not something that has to be judged. We have to accept each other and love each other the way I, the way we are. Wow, I love your answer. With that, the crown is yours now. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> this is, uh, yeah, Moat Crown. This is yours now. <laughs> anyway, thank you for answering the question. I believe you are so ready. Very for good. Yes, yes. You know, very, very good. Answer, you know, I love it. I, I, and um, you can actually review this and then learn from it as well if you want to learn something from it. But it's really a very good challenge, the Q&A challenge. Yes, yeah, okay. I do it a lot. Actually, I do it a lot in my practices uh, with my teachers and also with myself. I, yeah. I ask myself a lot of questions and it's a really good way to practice. That is a tip. Yeah, it's different when, the, when the hundreds of people are actually watching you right now live from all over the world. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So Drew, now you will we're be on the, now the final word. Yes, final word. I promise uh, Gabriela Isler that we'll just have one hour, so we'll make this quick. <laughs> so, <laughs> Mariam Hell, as a Miss Universe, as a Miss Venezuela, rather, expectations for oh. you are very, very high. But what about you? What are your expectations going into Miss Universe? Right now, I'm feeling relaxed and I'm feeling calm because I am confident and insecure of what I've been doing and, and of what I want to show. So I'm just waiting anxious for the moment to get there and to enjoy the whole competition and, and to enjoy each one of the activities because I know each one of them are important and, and to connect with the, with the whole universe with the best energy and hopefully to get what what I've been working for a long time. Yes. And now the next question. Marianne Hell, how badly do you want the crown? And if oh there God. is one thing that you would sacrifice for the crown, what would it be? I, I don't know. I don't think I would sacrifice anything because mm -hmm. it, it's something that it, it, I believe that when something is for you, you have to work. Of course, you have to to make a sacrifice, but in a good way, to sacrifice a little bit of time and a little bit of energy at least, uh, just to make sure that the whole activities are completed and that you are giving the whole part of you to make this uh, happen. But I would sacrifice anything in the bad way, but just keep working the way I am. And if, if that crown is for me, it will be yes. uh, no matter what. Yes. And uh, I know as a beauty queen, you're subjected to a lot of comments online, but um, what would be your message to someone who thinks that you are not qualified enough to represent Venezuela in this universe? I would say that I don't have to, to hear other voices. I learned during my experience that the only voice I need to hear is my own voice. So in, in that case, I just will keep working on the things that I, I have to improve and I, I have to keep showing the world the person I am with authenticity, with being honest, being responsible, disciplined, really focused and, and, and really passionate and showing all my love and doing things with so much love. And that is the best answer and the best example that I can give to that person. Wow. Okay, now I'll ask another question for you. So what qualities do you feel that you have that would make you a great Miss Universe winner? Yeah, one of the best qualities, as I told you before, is discipline first. It's something that every beauty queen should have, but also emotional intelligence, because you have to face with a lot of situations and, and to build relationships with all people and to manage your emotions and, and also knowing how to manage other people's emotions. So in that case, I feel like I, I want to use this platform to help people to understand that and to help young girls and, 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 and women to understand that they are capable enough to understand and to hear their voice and, and to, to achieve that thing that they want. So this is what, uh, what makes me feel like I'm ready for this, for this uh, position. Okay, now in a scale of one to 10, one being the lowest and 10 being the highest, how prepared are you now for Miss Universe competition? <laughs> I 
<laughs> I love that. Okay. Now, Drew, go to the pass or go question now. So, yes, so this is the pass or go question. Go, Mir. Okay. Um, okay. We'll, type, uh, we'll already type the comment on your private chat, and you will have the option to answer the question or, pa or to pass. So the question is on the chat box. You can read it now. Silently. <laughs> Silently. I will go. Uh, yeah, I will oh, go. I love it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it. Okay. I, go, 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 see go. Go, go, see it. Go. Yeah, I know. Yourself, I know. Yourself, who do you think are your biggest competitions in the upcoming Miss Universe? I know that I'm a biggest competition, of course. I, I won't like to compete with others, but there are some strong candidates that I really admire right now. And, and one is Chile. She is the one that I feel the most connected with because I share a lot with her. And, and I feel like she has this authentic personality and I really love her. Also South Africa for me has such an amazing and a strong responsibility, but she's a good candidate. And she's also an entrepreneur like me. So I really admire her. And I can include a third one, which is Spain. I think she's a really interesting and kind girl. So she might be ready for the crown out as well. Speaking of Miss Spain, she will be our guest tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> yeah. send, it, send her all my love and, and tell her that I, I want to meet her very soon. OK, OK. Will do. Drew. Yes, and now fill in the box. I am Mariangel Villasmil from Venezuela, and I am blank. I am Mariangel Villasmil from Venezuela, and I am a powerful woman who loves herself enough to realize that she's ready to conquer the universe. I love, I it. love that. <laughs> and before, before we let you go, Mariangel, a, a quick message to all your fans from around the world. You can also talk to them in Spanish and then please invite them to vote for you on the Miss Universe app. Thank you, all of you, for joining us in this amazing conversation. I really had such a great time and I know that you do the same. And thank you for all the support. Gracias a todos los venezolanos que he visto algunos comentarios por allí que están apoyándome, no matter what. Siempre están allí mandándome sus mejores energías. Gracias por estar acompañándome durante toda la jornada. There's just like a few days to, to go and to travel, and I'm so excited. Remember, remember that the moment you decide to love yourself, the universe will fall in love with you. So don't forget that never in your life. Thank you so much for having me today. All of you guys, you are such an amazing uh, interviewers and and. I really love this conversation. Yeah. Yes, and we would also oh, like to thank you for, for joining us here on Nostalgy Beauty Talks. Thank you so much. I know you're so busy, so thank you. Despite of your busy schedules, you gave us your time. Thank you so much. Thank and you, Gabriel, also, as well yeah. for giving us the opportunity. Yeah, to Gabby, to be there also. somewhere. She is always join me and, and accompany me in the whole process. She is just such an amazing supporter. So thank you to her as well. Yeah. yeah. Please tell her that I love her so much. I like her. <laughs> of course, I will tell her. <laughs> yeah, I love the way she walks. Yes. yes. <laughs> shout, shout out to Gabriela Isler. Thank you. Thank you so uh, much for accommodating us and for having us to interview Mariangel. It's such a pleasure. And we'll, we wish you all the best, Mariangel, for Miss Universe. Thank you so much. A safe Thank journey you. to Florida. And we hope to see you soon. Yeah, I hope to see you soon, guys. I send you all my thank hugs you. and kisses. Thank you, thank you. And hi Bye. to Isabel. Yes. Yeah, of course, of course. Bye. I'm so excited for you. Muchas gracias. So there you have it, our Miss Venezuela 2020, Mariangel Villasmil, our resident expert, Ethan. What can you say about her? <laughs> Yes. Well, first of all, I just want to repeat it. Venezuela is Venezuela. And I have to, um, well, actually, I really have to admit um, that I was not uh, one of those people who actually noticed Maria Angel when she joined the Miss Venezuela beauty pageant because we were, usually we were just so enamored by what's written on the hot pics, on, on the 
various blogs and she said it clearly that you know she felt bad when she's her name was not mentioned and we also rely on those lists sometimes when we when we compare our rankings and who will win and who yes. will not. And because of this interview, and once again, it has been proven that you know Venezuela don't make mistakes when they crown their winners, and they really know who's, who's the best one to represent their country. And um, it, it's um, for those who still don't believe in Maria Angel, I think I think this video would actually prove otherwise. Would prove once again, and if let's say. Um, sometimes when 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 a, when a Miss Venezuela does not make it to the top twenty or the top ten, sometimes we just make this uh, um, assumption that she's not good in the interview. No, I don't think they have the reason to say that anymore. You know, <laughs> if they have read this interview, I don't think they can use that as an excuse for um, totally discounting or single singling out Maria Angel because she's an amazing uh, spokesperson. She speaks very well. She's very honest. She's very genuine. I can easily connect with what she's saying, and uh, yeah, I, I I know that Venezuelans are always very um, very um, genuine and authentic when every time they start talking and speaking, and that is probably one of the reasons why they are really very successful in the world of pageantry. So that's just all yes. I can say. Yeah. For my for my end, all I can say is she reminds me. In some ways, of uh, Gabriela Isla. That's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When she speaks, uh, right? Yeah. Uh, yes. That's right. Like there's, there's the it's Gabriela crazy. Isla charisma and magic in her. I can see that. Yeah. And Amir, who will be our special guest for tomorrow? Oh, this. okay. We have a special <laughs> guest for tonight. Tonight. <laughs> uh, for tomorrow, we'll be having. Uh, before we end the show, we want to invite you all to please tune in again tomorrow at 9 p.m. And we will have in the interview for Miss Universe Spain 2020, Andrea Martinez. That is 9 p.m. Manila time and 3 p.m. Madrid time. And 9 a.m. Puerto Rico time. I will try yes, to be there in Puerto Rico. Rico. Camping. I will just try, but I cannot promise. But I really miss interviewing the girls and joining you guys because you yes. do really amazing. You work so hard for this. It's pretty impressive, actually. Your adrenaline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and again, Drew, Drew, before we end this live, we would just like to say thank you to all the fans who sent all the questions. We're very sorry we're going to read it all because we have limited time for, for Maria Angel. And yes, once again, we're just so like happy. Say, yeah, and once just, again, we'd like to say thank you to Miss Venezuela Organization, especially to Gabriela Esler, for allowing us to have the interview with Maria Angel. We are so excited. And you know, Drew, whenever Venezuela comes, I feel like you know a big fan of Venezuela beauty queens. Yes, I'm and, a big uh, fan. and just if if uh, Gabriela is watching, we wish you a safe pregnancy. Sure. She's uh, having true, a yeah. baby, so First we're very excited. Comes out healthy, that. yeah. Yes, more than and any. um, again, I, I want to thank all the fans who always send in the questions. <clears throat> I'm sorry, and to Paquito, my friend, who is one of the one of the very lucky fans to be able to ask a live a question live to one of the queens so i think we should be doing more of that in the future edition yes if we have and future Drew, editions yes and if you want to watch our previous episodes you can go to our facebook page and youtube channel you can also listen to our podcast on anchor.fm and spotify so see you again next time Good night, everyone, and thank you for watching. Thank you, Steph, yes, and thank you, Drew. Pleasure. Thank you so much, Amir and thank Drew. Thank you. Bye-bye. Ganyan na ganyan yung itsura niya. Let's do it! What the hell? Like, it's me. You say, oh my god. They was like, holy, holy deep. What's this going on? Because, <laughs> uh, I, 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 even now, I, I, I get like speechless. Why is it important for a to have a good time? If you do not know how to speak your mind, you're not going to give your organization much credibility for what you're really fighting for. Beauty Queen doesn't mean perfection. Now I feel embarrassed to say this, but I'm going to do it because that's how I am. So. <laughs> good, no, go. My wave became, became the Miss International wave. Right, Stephen? I have become a patent. Ito naman yung bumabasa. Oh my God. Kasi nasabi. May nang planet. Tapos pag inaangat ko, hinihila niya. So ako, angat siya. Hinihila. Oh, hinihila. Ang gano'ng gano'ng. My travels. I love my travels.
I would just want it to be that I gave something back that made them happy. Money or love? Love. 